Okay. You are a spoiler. We put this bad boy in. We put this in on November, October 19th, 2020. See? Not my handwriting, but my initials. Okay. This circulator here is feeding the braze plate heat exchanger there. So it takes water from the bottom of the boiler here, goes across through the brace plate heat exchanger and back to the boiler, right? That circulator there is on the other side of the brace plate heat exchanger and it's circulating water to a basement zone, okay? Now, we're gonna take our non-contact electrical tester. This is by Fluke. No power, okay? Now, we're going into this little relay box, All right? So, here is my contacts that appear to be activating the boiler. And I guess the other one is going to a aquastat, a strap-on aquastat. So, power comes in here. So, this is a neutral. This is a line. That's a line. This is power coming in, right? Let's see, let's follow that. There, so we have 110 volts there. We don't have 110 volts leaving this relay. We need a new single zone switching relay. You got that, Peter? Yep. Excellent. You know where it is in the truck? Good. It's with the three zone and six zone Tego switching relay, and then also a single zone. Just a single zone. Peter, well done. You got that relatively quickly. All right. Tako SR501. One zone switching relay. There it is. Let's just quickly review. Now, some of you may be thinking, Mikey Pipes, just take out this relay, right? It don't come out. It don't, all right? On the top, this would be thermostat connection. All right, TT, and also the newer uh, switching relays also have a C, so you can have R, W, and common. A lot of thermostats now, you know, Wi-Fi, you know, Internet of Things, as they say, IoT. Mm -hmm. We have Wi-Fi, so we need a common wire there, particularly with Nest, you know, the Sensi thermostats, Ecobee, things like that. Down below, we have our 110 volt input. So neutral and hot, and then we have three and four. Three would be a common, and four would be normally open, normally closed. If you look at the schematic, you're gonna see, once we get in there, the circulator goes on normally open and O, and the number neutral, all right? And there's our end switch, which goes to the boiler. So, we have our nice little Milwaukee flashlight here. It's magnetic. Hit the button. I'm gonna smash that right there, and this is what I'm working with. I would say that's probably about an arm's length right there. My little fat ass is gonna get in here. Boiler switches off. All right? And I wish I had a, something a little bucket to stand on, not to sit on. Let's see. You know what? Let me have... Might be too big. That may be too big, but let's see. Let's try. I'm going to flip that over. And I... I'm going to sit here. Okay. Here we have it. We're going to start by removing some of these wires here. So now they brought in the line voltage for circulator to the top we have another line voltage from power source at the bottom and the other one here is going to there if i had like a, a three-way one of these bx connectors that would be nice but i don't this is the thermostat right i don't like this it's cluttering up everything here maybe we'll clean this up a little bit right maybe 
Okay, start disconnecting the wires. All right, so I cut back TT, which is up there. All right, Peter's just gonna cut that out of the way. All right, nice, let's get rid of that, it's garbage. What we'll get is, uh, let's get some two wire thermostat wire and we'll splice that right there. You know, the two wires and red and the white. Mm -hmm. Get a couple of Wagos there and we'll zip tie this down along here and we'll put it onto the new box. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Here we have our end switch, which is also wired in series to our strap on Aquastat, which is right there. So when that senses a temperature, Usually I send them for 160. It's going to kill the signal to the boiler or the thermostat really inside the boiler. Yet still power the circulator until the temperature drops. And if the call for heat is not satisfied, it will reclose thermostat relay signal and tell the boiler to fire back up. Hey, listen, you know, I'm cool now. Let's heat heat back up. Okay, we're going to put those back the way they are. We have a red and a white, and then the white. So let's just get rid of this Wago. What's nice about the Wagos is that you can reuse them. Technically, wire nuts you're not supposed to reuse. Technically. Yeah, we all reuse them, right? But I only use Wagos. Okay. All right. Let's get rid of using my... We are neutrals. We have a lot of neutrals here. We have one to that one circulator, another to that circulator, and this is neutral coming in. I'm probably going to take a three wire Wago here and create a pigtail and just put one wire on neutral. Now, the next one line voltage from power source. Let's disconnect that. And none of the power is off, but we're good. Okay. Now, terminal f uh, four, normally open, has two. Get on there. Okay, two circulators. So there's one. And here's the other. Now, as you can see, all of my field wiring is disconnected from the board, the terminals on the board. I'm just gonna loosen up the three nuts on the BX connectors and then pull this off the side of the boiler. All right, so since the primary objective of this venue, this platform, this channel, is to be educational and also entertaining, let's take a closer look at the relay that we just removed from the side of the boiler and see if there's any damage. Okay, I already broke these two little plastic connectors there and there. I disconnected the low voltage secondary wiring leaving the transformer to the control board and also the line voltage. So now this should come out, maybe. I wanna try to pry that out like it's the ears on right, the left and right hand side. Yeah, grab that little channel lock or just try to separate the the metal. Let's see, maybe that'll work. Yes, no? And yeah, bend this whole flap back. Yeah. Alright? Because it's just resting in there. Now that board should come out. Okay, let's see if there's anything funky going on here. There's our relay. Looks nice and clean in there. We have a fuse. That fuse, that fuse looks burnt. The fuse looks burnt. Was I being premature and replacing the whole relay when it was just a fuse? Hmm. 
I wonder which of these circulators possibly blew the fuse where it's not sending voltage to normally open number four. Hmm. Nothing there, huh? Nothing. Interesting. So let's grab the other fuse, which is right here. And let's just test that one because that one looks fine. Oh, that one's good. All right, so now let's test, let's test our circulator. Here's the that one there. Let's see what our resistance reading is. Uh, we have two oh, two hundred. Okay, let's check the other one here. We have. Like 70. Hmm. Pop quiz, ladies and gentlemen. What should the resistance be on the motor windings? Pop quiz. Post your answer in the comment section down below. All right. Let's test meter. All right. So here is white and yellow. And we should have... 130 to 150, we have 201. And they also have the other circulator there, which has a whole different other numbers because it's three speeds. But let's test that one next. Can we get in there? Let's see what happens. We already blew the first fuse. Let's see what happens with the second fuse. That circulator is running. That circulator is bad. When we hooked up this circulator, it blew the fuse on here. Right? Yeah. With a bad circulator. It's probably more than likely locked like rotor, lock like a lock winding, turn that switch off. So we gotta replace the circulator. Alright. Taking these nuts out. We sprayed it down with the Errol Croyle, much better than WD-40, also got a smells too, though, but pop this circulator out. <laughs> better than smelling like old badge. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Melanie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, now you associated a name with the smell. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Bertha. Bertha. <laughs> the one I got away now. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't the prettiest thing to look at, but she did anything. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Damn. It's rough. All right. I see, Peter wiggled his way in there. <laughs> Literally, like an, like you slithered in there like an eel. That's what. She... That's what she said. <laughs> and you fit, you fit, you slid right in, like the Grand Canyon. Oh, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to Arizona in October. That's awesome. I'm going to Arizona in October. I'm going to, I found, I, I did it all last night. Usually in the summer, you know, we, we go away for like the end of, like end of August, for like a week and a half, two weeks. Wow, look at all that shit in there. Cocky, I mean. But I, I, I'm, one of my kids are getting married end of June, so, um, you know, it's quite an expense. So I'm going to postpone my summer excursion until October. But uh, I, I was reading this magazine yesterday. And there's a hotel called the Grand Canyon Railway and Hotel. And this hotel is located in Williams, Arizona, uh -huh. which is about like two hour north drive from Phoenix. Okay. Right. It's halfway. It's uh, what's halfway between Phoenix and Williams, Arizona is Sedona. Sedona. Okay. Not Sedona. Is it Sedona? Yeah, Sedona. Yeah. That's where I'm spending the second part of my trip. So anyway, I read this magazine yesterday. They have this railway and a hotel, right? And it, you're on this, this train. Railway and a hotel? Yeah, you get railed. <laughs> I'm not, this sounds amazing. <laughs> you, uh, you hop on this, this train, and there's different classes of, of things. And you, the lowest is like coach, like in the back of the bus. I mean, back of the plane, you know, like coach. It's a moving, it's a moving it's a train. Moving train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And it's different classes. So you have coach, you know, uh, the Pullman, which is like coach. And it goes all the way to like the luxurious, like uh, domed observation, like oh, okay. tier. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Right? And it's like in an old school train, 
right? That's what's up, man. And so two hour, two hour and a half, two and a half hours each way. Yeah. And you spend the night in a hotel. Okay. And, you know, you have it's like crazy views and, you know, you have two and a half hour guided in an in a air conditioned bus. Yeah. Take a wild guess, you know, two days, uh -huh. a like four star accommodations in a hotel. Yeah. Right? In a suite. Okay. And you're in the, like, it, there's, the, there's, there's coach. There's like Premier Comfort on Delta, then there's business, then there's first, and then there's like Polar United Polaris, like you're in like a, a Tesla spaceship. What is this, like a thousand a night? No, so for, to, yeah, well, basically. Yeah. So you have train, the bus, yeah. food, everything, yeah. 900 bucks. Yeah. And food too? Food too. Yeah, you can go. Yeah. Dinner, yeah. breakfast, yeah. lunch, yeah. both days. Yeah. Not bad. No, travel is cheap now. That's why I think yeah. I think that that's that's not gonna last yeah. like these these prices. Um, a lot of cocky in there. Should we I open got, this up? I let's, got majority. Let's, yeah. let's see what happens. Watch out. I would get it in. How's it look? Uh, it's steady stream. But it's clear. Okay. I picked out a lot of like mud. Good. I want you to open up the opposite valve over there that you closed, and let's see what kind of cocky comes out of the other side of the heat exchanger. Okay. I'll cut that one for a little bit. Peter's, uh, uh, I guess, drug of choice is Taco Bell. Oh, Taco Bell? Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah. Taco Bell. yeah. yeah. twice yesterday. You've got to clean his, clean his colon. You know, there's, there's pills you can get at GNC to do the same thing. Yeah. You want to so, cleanse your, your, your insides out. What's the side effects? So sometimes they would just last for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the, the 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 thing learned on this service call is that if you have a 007 circulator, the resistance between the two lines at the circulator should be you know 130 and 160. Even if it's 200, which is not that far off, you're still gonna blow the fuse. <laughs> that looks that looks cleaner, kind of. Yeah. But ironically, I didn't know the answer. But I called Takeo. How long were we on the phone for? 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. Yeah. And he didn't know either. He had to get an answer for us. Yeah. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Yeah. Oh, you remind me before I leave. I have a nice sticker I want to give you. Um, it's, it's it's something to do with Brandon. Well, not really, indirectly. Nice little sticker. Yeah. I would put it on my on my trucks, but I don't want to be associated with a, a political party. <laughs> Exactly. Disney. Kind of like Disney. Yeah. Disney decided that kindergartners yeah. through third graders should know about if you're gay, if you suck, if you suck, it makes sense. You saw or if you eat, you saw the air, and you're the right? same sex. You saw the air, right? Disney, oh, Walt Disney's air. Yeah. So, so it's like, yo, That's why? why? Yeah, but it's like, but why are you That's better. That? That's yeah. closer. Yeah, see, businesses should not get involved in politics. Yeah. And guess what? So now, it's a matter of time. I think they'll go bankrupt. You think so? Because they took away that the ready district uh, improvement zone, whatever, which yeah. is tax free. Oh. They collect their own taxes. They're self governing their own land. They, they, Take a wild guess what taxes are going to be on that on those miles, square miles of land. It's about sixty acres, I think. I yeah. What do you think the tax, the normal yeah, tax of, on that land is, and it's all developed? Oh yeah, yeah. So right? so so now that plus they got to pay for their own um, services. The yeah. Police department. So Florida is two percent of appraised value. That's, a, that's what at least it is for residential. Oh. So imagine you have developed land that's probably, let's say, ten billion dollars. What's two? That's what one percent of ten billion? Listen, they, I they, think Navian can answer that question. Yeah, they, they, they have until May. It expires in May. They do repeal. That's when it comes to effect. Yeah. Um, next year, they're gonna come to the table or do some shit. Say something. Yeah, they're gonna say, "I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, forgive me. Yeah, and yeah, here's yeah. here's like yeah. five hundred million dollars and play a fine and have a nice day." Do you think DeSantis is gonna run? Maybe. Because if Trump runs, I don't think he's going to win. I think he'll be Because a lot of people who are Republicans out there love Trump, but they're also not going to vote for him. Correct. Well, and they're not going to vote at all if, they, if he's on the ticket. You know what it is? He, 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 he dug himself by talking too much. On, I think he yeah. should just play it a little more cooler. Yeah. Don't, like, don't be wrong. But it's like, listen, I don't, we're not voting. Hold on one second. The direction of flow in the previous circulator. Where's the previous circulator? Which way was uh, it pointing? It is in the water. Is what? It's in the water right now. It's in the water? Oh, in the water. We need to get it. Okay. Carefully. I wouldn't put your hand in there. You're going to have to take the bucket outside. 
you have to you have to slide it out of that. You have to slide out that way mm -hmm. and dump this bucket out, or tilt the bucket and take the circulator out because we have to see direction of flow. Because a good technician is observant of his surroundings, and I didn't notice. Okay, take out 007E, circulator installed. This is my SR501 switching relay. Got a fuse behind there. All right, the way goes. Created a pigtail for my neutrals. Here is my TT, sorry, my XX. End switch going to thermostat relay inside the boiler, which is right there. And it's wide in series to the aquastat relay, which is right there. Thermostat white and red TT. Okay. We have a call for heat. Let's check out our circulators. Excellent. Yes. So, of course, we cycle the thermostat on the basement zone of the bottom of this boiler. And what happens, ladies and gentlemen? We find the leak. So I have to replace the pressure-reducing valve that was there. That was a Taco. Now it's a Kalefi. And now the system's running. My circulator. It's got that light on it's illuminated we have heat circulating through the zone there's one thing that's missing here there's no relief valve on this they have an expansion tank pressure reducing valve but there's no relief valve but he's selling the house so how much can we sodomize this guy for can we sodomize you a little bit harder Ooh, it's not saturday bro <laughs> <laughs> So one observation, I put in, the, I, I replaced the pressure reducing valve, the one that was leaking. Oh, that so now nice. you have that fine Italian engineering right there. It's it looks, Kalefi. Looks like Wakanda. Yeah. Yeah, Wakanda it's very Wakanda. nice. But I'm noticing, okay, you have an expansion tank. You have the pressure reducing valve. There's one thing that you, that you don't have, and that's called a relief valve. There's no relief valve on the other side of the brace plate heat exchanger. Now, I am not going to make you do it. Right? I'm not going to make it do it only because this has been this way for 20 years. Yeah. It's like, you know, All right. it's an institution. Yes. <laughs> well, okay, we'll say it's grandfathered in. And I'm sure people on YouTube are going to sodomize me for saying that. Just like I, I'm about to sodomize you when I give you the bill. Well, because you already know. You I've been know he here two the, hours. Do you know he was so romantic? <laughs> I am. I can always use a pay wife first. Oh, gotcha. I appreciate it. All right? We got two hours of labor. What was that thing you sprayed on this? What was it? You uh, use the coil? Oh, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the coil. It's not a WD-40. Because this is deeply penetrating. And if I'm going to go up in there, i got to go all up in there. It reminded me of my gym it's, coach. It's called <laughs> balls deep. You know, when the balls smack against the side of the boiler? Balls deep. See, Peter, we can be entertaining too. I'm not going to, I don't show faces. Oh, my gosh. But the look on your face right now yeah. is just priceless. No, this is a thing of beauty. I just, I'm just a little um, anxious. I have anxiety about the bill. You know? Why? I don't have anxiety. You don't have anxiety. It's don't all, have anxiety. It's, it's, it's all relative. It's, it's, you know what's great thing about, you know, you know, you know what's green besides your Takeo 007E <laughs> circulator? I like when you say that. It's U.S. Like, color, it's currency. <laughs> and you know what's the great thing about U.S. currency <laughs> is that you can make more of it. Is that what it is? <laughs> That's it. Oh, you mean? Or you know, if you want, if you really want to be creative, you get yeah. you, get, you get really 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 good printer. Yeah. Okay. And, and you get try to get like a nice cotton paper. Yeah. And oh, you print oh. your own currency. Hey, do you guys take? Bitcoin? Or if, if as I do take Bitcoin, I take Doge, <laughs> and depending on the price, I'll take Ethereum. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. right? So All right. Bitcoin, you, Doge, you, depending on the price today, Ethereum. You fancy? How about cloud? I could just pay you a clout. What's clout? Like, you know. Like the so strength. Like, you know, people know you. you know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, listen, if you happen to be like a social media influencer yeah. and you had like a million followers, yeah, no, I'll probably no. blow you. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> For a shout out. No, I don't even have a Facebook. No? <laughs> I'm off that. Oh, did you hear? Yeah. So that yesterday, Elon Musk announced that he bought Twitter. Yes. For a record shattering like $44.5 billion. That's right. He also tweeted that he's going to buy Facebook. And then delete it. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a boss move. That's a boss move right there. The guy's the richest person on the face of the earth. On paper. On paper, Because yeah. you know that 
that guy, that psycho over in Russia. I was about to say, there's a guy on Russia that I think. Man, that guy is straight up a lunatic. Yeah. I mean, but no one's gonna mess with him. No one's gonna mess with him. But that's what it is, bro. I mean, if you know a guy over there, I could take him out. Please make a phone call. <laughs> you know, but. If I knew a guy that could take him out, I think I would probably be in the same position that, that uh, Musk is in. Oh, you probably, yeah. Because I would yeah. probably get, listen, if someone paid me, you know, like, listen, Mikey Pipes, here's, here's $10 billion. We'll take care of Putin. Yeah, I'm up. Bad, I got you. I'm already there. I yeah, got I, you. <laughs> I feel bad for Ukraine. I think Ukraine made a boss move. Like, yo, people got my back. So you want me? You want Ukraine? Come get us. And then he's like, oh, shit. No one's coming. <laughs> right. I think he over he, he, he uh, miscalculated. Yeah. Did you end up getting a stainless steel trimming liner? Yeah, and I, I get a new one. No, they opened it up. That's okay. Like, yeah, Good. remember you, you had a lighter on you. I had a lighter, and you had very little draft. Yeah. yeah. And I think we even did the test results yeah. there, and it was very minimal. Yeah, redid the chimney liner. Very nice. They, capped, they did a winter cap on top. You know, took care of the place. This nice. Is hard. And now you're going to North Carolina. That's right. And your job, I guess you're mobile. You could be anywhere yeah, in the world. Yeah. You could be on the beach in, like in, in Dubai. If I have a good Wi-Fi. I need you need a good Wi-Fi. That's what it is. But, you know, if you get a good sat phone. Oh, that's true. Wait, you could be boss. Satellite have, phone. Oh, I, I don't know if they have, I mean, you know. With data. Yeah, yeah, okay. Come yeah. on, we can send people to Mars. Yeah. But, right uh, in the moon. We, gonna, we can't communicate in the middle of a desert with satellite. You know, when we try to do this, Musk, like, Musk uh, boss. When we try to do the SBA, the PPP loans, the, the website crashed. That was the federal government. So, yeah, it's like, yeah. You know, I got a letter from the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance okay. yesterday in the mail. Fun people. Yes. So, I um, accidentally filed my sales tax return and also the money I have to give them that I collect on behalf of the state of New York. Yeah. I filed actually not even 24 hours late. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I thought there was like 30 days or 31 days in March or whatever, or February. Well, you had 10, there's 10% penalty right off the bat. I know, but they give you like an extra like like month, like 30 days to file. Whatever. I was I was basically not even 24 hours late in filing. Mm -hmm. So not only did I get hit with interest, which was like, I don't know, like 80 bucks for like mm -hmm. two weeks. Mm -hmm. I don't know, the mm -hmm. time they processed it. Yeah, yeah. But a 10% fine. No, right 10%? That's right. It's almost $1,000. You do monthly or quarterly file? I do quarterly. I'm an accountant. Okay, so I you do, do quarterly. You do STA 10. That's what you do. I go online, yeah. you know, state, yeah. tax.state.gov, whatever, yeah. and I do it that way. Yeah, so... But you, because I started a new corporation uh, in, in January this year, I you okay. know, I got rid of my previous one because your Navy is suing me. Got you, got you. Got right, you. and yeah. I just want to, you know, just put that... There. And they're suing no, the wrong company. No, no, smart, smart move, smart move. So, right, so, so I, so I, I yeah. shelved that, yeah. right? Yeah. And I, I just got rid of that corporation. I started a new one. Because okay. I also knew we're now Pipe Doctor Home Services. Okay. Because we do plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. Listen, if it's your first time, it's a new company, and it's your first filing... So I, I was like, you know what, I'm not... No, call them up. They'll, they'll call them up? They'll waive it, trust me. Really? I've done, I'm an accountant. I do this. One time I, I messed up, I filed late for people. I already so, paid this morning. Oh, okay. How did it... I'm an accountant. I don't know if I told you that. Yeah. You're an what, accountant? That's what I do. So, yeah. Just call them up. Like, See, I, I wish you were my accountant. Because my, the accountant that I use... Yeah. I don't know. He's just like, he's an old, he's an old guy, man. I'm surprised he even has QuickBooks. You give him two bucks with receipts, you know? Like, no, everything for me is uh, mobile. But what I do is, like, if clients don't have the money now, right, they do monthly, monthly, then a quarterly true up. Yeah. I tell them, pay a little something. It doesn't matter. So just give them, give them a couple hundred bucks. Something they don't know. They'll true it up later. I know. That's, cause you know what's really money. annoying about sales tax? What? There's really one, there's, there's two things that are annoying. One thing that really pisses me off, why should they know what my gross... Taxable and non-taxable sales are for that given tax period. That's number one. Yeah. They should not know that. Yeah, they, right? They're, they're in charge of sales tax. No. Right? But number two is that, let's say, this valve mm -hmm. right here. I purchased this valve for you. Yeah. Right? And as a repair. So if you already have, if you already have a valve there, yeah. think about the water here. So let's say the valve is leaking water. The valve up there is leaking water. It's yeah. dripping. I got to yeah. cut it out and replace it. Yeah. Let's say the valve costs me a hundred bucks. The material costs me a hundred bucks. Cool. I am paying a hundred eight dollars and sixty two point five cents on a hundred tax on sales tax on a hundred bucks. When you buy that? When I buy that? You're not supposed to. No. Yes, you are. New York State is different. Now, when I install this, let's yeah. say I install it for 300 bucks. Yeah. I'm collecting sales tax on $300, right? Yes. Sure. And now I got to take the, the $8 and whatever cents I paid for it and offset off that off, as a credit off the selling price. 
All right, and give them the difference. You know how much paperwork is involved well, in that nonsense? Why, why do you have to pay a sales tax? You're not the end user. You're reselling this. So you should get something called a resale. That tax. makes sense in, in all the other states except New York. No, New York has that. No, it doesn't. Trust me. If you read the fine prints, yeah. there's actually a publication yeah. the New York State Ta Department of Taxation and Finance has yeah. uh, that's designed for contractors and home service companies. Uh, right? Okay. If you stain your deck yeah. for the first time, it's not taxable. If you restain it, you know, for subsequent service, that's taxable. Yeah, if I replace your water heater, let's yeah. say you didn't have one. I, I installed a new water heater for you. One, yeah. It's not taxable. If I replace your water heater, that's it's not taxable. Yeah. If I replace your boiler, it's not taxable. If I repair this right here, yeah. a leak, that's taxable. No, so all but if I added a new pipe to it, yeah. it's not taxable. Wait, all the parts that you sell, you resell to customers, you're paying sales tax? Yes. Why? But you're reselling it. It doesn't matter. They're, they're, that, that, that now, product, okay. That product, that product is being, they're collecting tax yes, twice. twice on that. I totally agree. On that same but when, if you have a yeah. free time, yeah. and like, uh, like, not that you do, yeah. but if you go to find the publication yeah. that deals for contractors and home service yeah. companies okay. and it okay. breaks it all down, okay. it tells you, it, it even gives you examples. Got you. I'll, I'll give you an example. Right. So let's say you buy a new refrigerator from Home Depot. Uh -huh. You're going to pay tax on that. But if you have them install it, right, there's no tax on it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's very weird. No, but if it's applied and installed, and it yeah. becomes a non-tangible yeah, yeah. tangible part of the real property or an intangible part of the real property, uh, it's non-taxable. If it's a tangible item and does not become a part of the real property, even though like the valve becomes a real part, but you're maintaining something that was already there to replace it, is that if it, it's messed up? So that's the second most thing that pisses me off with taxation in New York State. Well, bro, why? What makes you? What makes you gotta think about it too, right? It's like, listen, they're collecting all these taxes, they're collecting the income tax and all this stuff, and they still gotta dip into the Fed for help. Yeah, meanwhile, and you still have effing potholes in the street. Yeah, and meanwhile, Florida doesn't have no state income tax. Nope, and their and their budget's balanced. Yeah, correct. What does that tell you? I, I, I and, oh, dude, I and I, that and I don't want, I don't like to mix yeah, politics yeah, yeah, with business, yeah, yeah, but yeah. there's a you know we're like kind of like California. Oh yeah. We're, um, just, we haven't reached there yet, but we're on our You know, it's there. amazing. I went to Lake Tahoe to okay. ski uh, a few months ago. Okay. In early March. Yeah, I'm brown. We don't do that, but. <laughs> well, you're kind of like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> brown boy, don't go skiing. Yeah, no. Trust me, there is some brown boys and some brothers up on them slopes. <laughs> yeah? And they, they hope they're banging them some snow bunnies. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah snow oh, bunnies. That's all that's, that's about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we, we landed in Reno. Yeah. Right? And I, we got an Uber driver. Okay. Right, and she drives the forty-five minutes to bring us to Tahoe and uh -huh. uh, whatever it was. She was telling me she's originally from California, uh -huh. right? And she, you know, technically, quote unquote, lives in Nevada for the taxes, because the tax rate on the other side of the state line is so extreme that she'd rather take a risk in claiming that she lives in Nevada and she has a residence there, but she doesn't really go to bed there every night, right? But that's how <laughs> fuck effed up. California is. Yeah. So she goes across the border and she does most of her work in Nevada, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. she goes, Mike, listen, it's, it's ridiculous. And they're nuts. Yeah. These, 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 these people, these Californians, what, Californians? Californians? Californians. Well, well, Californians. Floridians, them, Californians, New Yorkers. A lot of them are moving out to where we're, where we're thinking of, Florida, North Carolina. So I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm opening up an office down in South Carolina. Okay. And if I was actually smart enough and for the you know foresee the future. When I started discussing this last January, or la not last January, last June, July, August, okay. I should have bought something right then and there. Yeah. Because the price went up thirty percent. People thirty okay. percent. You know how much I paid Joe sixty over asking for the house in North Carolina. Really? It's, it's a bidding, so it's a bidding war. It's a bidding war. So there's no inventory there either. No. How old is the house you're buying? Uh, twenty years. Not bad. No, but it's, colonial uh, ranch. No, it's a... Single floor, two floors? No, two floors. Two floors. All right. It's almost an acre. Mini, almost an acre. Yeah. Like and like a mini Taj Mahal. How long is your driveway? Well, it's... I'm at the cul-de-sac, so I try to... You know, like, you have to get to... So that's Can true. you put gates in your driveway? Um, No, you can't. It's because of the HOA, but I have oh. the, whole, the whole property around this fence. You know, nice. Cities, so. It's almost an acre of land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why... What are you going to do in that? Just keep away from people. I hear you. You know, like, you. you know, just wave, like, hey, guys, you know. I hear you. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I would tell you, I know you're going to North Carolina, but the property, the real estate property in, in in the South, the Carolinas, Florida especially. Florida jumped up. Right, right, now, they said, right now they said the promised land is uh, Tennessee and Texas. It's crazy. That's what he said. Uh, Texas. Yeah, because 
everything jumped up. There's people that um that are putting their house on the market. They're they had it for two years. They're trying to cash out. But listen, if you can make three hundred grand in two years, why not? That's what's going on. You're right. Well, why not? Where do you make that type of money? Why not? I, I'll just rent until it goes. Oh, down. here's how you can do. You could do. You could be in finance, like a hedge fund, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was flying back from Florida the other day, and I watched this movie on a plane. Actually, it was Netflix. Okay. Um, called Margin Call. Oh, I, I seen, I seen. This is it. like the, one. I don't know if it's based on a true story, but it sounds like it's based on a true story. It's like the first like hedge fund finance, you know, finance firm that saw what was going on with, with the real estate bubble in the 2000s. Yeah, um, Steve Carell, um, what was yeah, that? Yeah, the other guy. Well, yeah, the baby-faced young guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The whole domino was oh, the Jenga, and like, yeah. Uh, when he was talking oh, about the, that yeah. was uh, Wall Street, no? No, that's Leonardo DiCaprio. Margin Call oh. uh, was about the, uh, the housing market. Uh, Kevin Spacey's in it. Uh, was it Christian Bale in there, too? I don't know. I'm not good with, oh, with okay. actor, actors' oh. names. What, you're freaking Kurt Russell. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, Hold on. Do I look like Kurt yeah. Russell? Yes, you do. I don't know who he is either. Yeah. Do I look like it? Comment in the comment section down below. Until then, be well, God bless. Stay safe.